An elderly woman sat by the sea, watching the water. Waves rolled onto the shore, sweeping away grains of sand and colorful pebbles. A yellow leaf fell onto the water and spun around, like a little boat caught in a storm. The wind blew, and another leaf fell, then another, and the waves continued to wash the shore, cleansing her soul of sadness and pain. So, it's autumn, sighed Evelyn. It feels like just yesterday it was spring. Life has flown by now I'm old, yet it seems like just yesterday I was a young girl, young and foolish. Evelyn graduated from high school with honors and entered university. It wasn't surprising her father was a professor. Her mother also taught at the university. Evelyn studied well, knowledge came easily to her. Her parents were sure they were grooming their successor. However, before her first year, Evelyn fell in love. She fell in love completely foolishly with a guy who was completely unsuitable for her. At least, that's what her parents thought. That summer, Evelyn was vacationing at a resort with her mother. Her parents gave her such a gift as she had graduated from high school and entered medical university. Evelyn deserved a good rest. Everything at the resort was top-notch, but her mother hovered over her so much that she got bored. At 20, the girl wanted to swim in the sea, sunbathe, admire nature, laugh, dance, love. Evelyn, why do you want to go to the Central Beach? Her mother wondered. There are lots of people, noise, bustle. Our beach near the resort is quiet, clean, cozy. Mom, I'm tired of it here. Maybe you like it here, but I want to see people, show myself off, go to the city, see the sights. Are you coming with me? Well, let's go, Mom. No, daughter, go alone, Mrs. Adams shook her head. I'd rather lie on the beach with a book. I don't want to go anywhere. Mrs. Adams didn't like noise and crowds of people. She wanted peace and quiet after the hustle and bustle of the city. Not that Evelyn was greatly upset that her mother refused to go with her. She felt quite fine on her own. The girl was accustomed to solitude. Evelyn was the only child of her parents. Her parents worked a lot, so from an early age she learned to entertain and occupy herself. She was a responsible girl she did her homework herself, went to dance classes, fed her cat. She had few friends. Her parents didn't like it when she brought anyone home so Evelyn didn't mind being alone at all. The girl explored the surroundings. She had already strolled along the promenade, admired the blooming magnolias. By the way, those were her favorite blooming trees. She visited nearby palaces, wandered through shady alleys, even went to the zoo she tried not to miss anything interesting. And now Evelyn had come to see the waterfall. She was told it was very beautiful here, However, instead of a tall, full-flowing waterfall, she saw only a small stream, trickling down from the mountain like a thin thread. The girl looked disappointedly at the landmark. Around her, other tourists crowded, equally disappointed. Come in the spring. She heard a cheerful voice behind her, or in the autumn after the rains. That's when you'll see a real waterfall. The girl turned around. Standing next to her was a handsome, dark-eyed boy with long eyelashes and a childishly open smile. Is this your first time here? he asked, smiling. Yes, Evelyn nodded. And you? I live here. The stranger smiled again. My family lives here, actually. It turned out that John and his family lived in this resort town and they were involved in trading. We buy all kinds of shells wholesale, colorful stones, make souvenirs and sell them, the boy explained. We have plenty of all that I'll show you sometime. And we also trade in seasonal fruits and vegetables. We have a big garden and greenhouses. John told Evelyn about the places he had been to, about all the sites. He knew many local legends and various interesting stories. Evelyn was very interested in listening to John's stories, and he could tell them endlessly. They sat together on the beach, took a stroll along the promenade. John escorted Evelyn to the resort promising to meet her the next day. 
And of course they did meet. When Evelyn came out, John was already waiting for her. In his hands was a branch of blooming magnolia. Evelyn mentioned that she loved the flowers of this tree. That day John decided to show Evelyn all the interesting places nearby. They often just walked along the promenade or sat by the sea, listening to the whispers of the waves. Evelyn, where are you going tomorrow? Mrs. Adams asked one day. I'm getting tired of sitting here all day. We should see the sights. We're going home soon. Oh, Mom, I'm busy tomorrow. Evelyn babbled, lowering her eyes. I'm going on a tour of the caves. It's the last place, so we can't go together. Have fun without me today. Mrs. Adams looked at her daughter in surprise, but remained silent, choosing not to voice her suspicions. Three weeks of vacation at the resort were coming to an end. Evelyn, when will we see each other again? John asked, saying goodbye to his beloved day before departure. I'll miss you without you. I'll definitely come next year, she said, resting her head on his shoulder. And if you're ever in the capital, find me. They exchanged addresses. The next day, Evelyn and Mrs. Adams were waiting for the train at the station. It was supposed to take them back home to their familiar world. Evelyn. Evelyn. Suddenly, amidst the noise of the station, the girl heard a loud cry. John. She saw her beloved in the distance. John was running along the platform, searching for her familiar silhouette. Evelyn, stop it. People are looking at you. Mrs. Adams frowned. Let's go already. It's time. Otherwise, the train will leave without us. Wait, Mom. There's John. The girl brushed her mother's hand aside. He's looking for me. He came to say goodbye. I won't leave without saying goodbye to him. John finally spotted Evelyn. He ran up to her and offered a branch of magnolia with big pink flowers. I love you, he said. Marry me, Evelyn. Evelyn blushed and misses. Adams paled. Don't embarrass me. She hissed to her daughter. Let's go already. I'll think about it, okay? The girl whispered softly. Will you wait for me? I'll definitely come back next summer. Of course, my love, John said. People on the platform applauded them, and Mrs. Adams dragged Evelyn into the train carriage. The train departed. On the platform, a handsome dark-eyed young man remained standing. He kept waving after the departing train, while inside the train carriage, a fair-haired blonde with tears in her eyes looked out the window and waved back at him. What was that all about? Mrs. Adams looked at her daughter attentively and sternly. Who is he, and what relation does he have to you? That's John. We love each other, the girl whispered. But he's from a poor background and lacks education. Did he even finish school? What do you have in common with him? There's nothing to talk about with him. Mom, why are you like this? Of course, he finished school and attends college, and there's plenty to talk about with him. Plenty to talk about. The mother scoffed at her daughter. I see you've been talking a lot. A professor's daughter and... Mom, don't dare. John is a good guy. I'll finish university and marry him, Evelyn declared. If you do this, you're no daughter of mine. Mrs. Adams cut her off. I didn't invest so much time and effort in you just for you to waste your talent, your life like this. Remember, daughter, it's either us or him. You have a bright future in the capital, and he'll spend his whole life selling peaches at the market. Evelyn decided not to argue with her mother. After all, she wasn't planning to get married right now. Maybe everything will still work out, she thought. Mom will get used to the idea that we love each other. After all, they only have one daughter. Mom can't remain indifferent. She used to love, too. Nothing to worry about, thought Mrs. Adams at that moment. He's there, 
and we're hundreds of kilometers away. Maybe they won't see each other again. Love doesn't care about distances. And what kind of love is this anyway two weeks acquainted? It's just summer, sun, hormones kicking in. Once university classes start, this nonsense will quickly fade away. There are plenty of good, decent guys from good families there. Autumn came. Evelyn went to university. First-year lectures and labs searching for materials in the library, practical work that sometimes required staying up all night indeed, there was less and less time for dreaming about love. Evelyn enjoyed studying it came easy to her, but effort was still required. However, her love for John didn't disappear. It poured out in long letters, written in beautiful calligraphic handwriting. In them, Evelyn swore her love to John, promised to return to him, reminisced about their warm, carefree summer. John wrote to Evelyn, too. He wrote about how the magnolia had already bloomed and the time for pomegranates was beginning. He told her about going to the market with his parents to sell fruit. Evelyn loved southern markets permeated with the scent of fruits, the scent of sun and sea. John described various comical situations. Evelyn read his letters, and it seemed to her that she was there again, on the shore. They walked barefoot in the water, and John kept talking telling her his endless funny stories. Of course, he also wrote to her about love, promised to wait for the next summer, and believed that they would eventually get married. Evelyn opened the door with her key. Today her mother was home. The apartment smelled deliciously of pies. Mrs. Adams baked well, although she did it very rarely. Evelyn couldn't see her mother anywhere. She walked into her room. Mrs. Adams was sitting on her bed, reading her letters. Letters from John. Mom, what are you doing? Evelyn couldn't believe her eyes. She had never noticed her mother intruding so rudely into her personal life before. However, she didn't see the whole picture. In reality, Mrs. Adams kept everything under control. She knew where her daughter's personal diary was kept and from time to time, so discreetly that Evelyn didn't know or suspect, she would read it, and she felt no guilt about it. Mrs. Adams flinched upon hearing her daughter's voice. She hadn't expected Evelyn to return so early and hadn't heard her come in. I've been reading all the nonsense your illiterate John writes to you, Mrs. Adams remarked. He writes those letters to me. What right do you have to touch them? Evelyn retorted. I'm your mother, and I have every right to know what my daughter is up to. Mrs. Adams raised her head. I never thought you would disrespect yourself to this extent. Why disrespect? John doesn't write anything objectionable, Evelyn shrugged. I don't care what he writes about the meaning of his statements is difficult to discern. He writes so illiterately that it's practically unreadable. Don't you see how many mistakes are in his letters? Doesn't that bother you? You, the daughter of a professor, Mrs. Adams grabbed a red pen and began conspicuously correcting errors in one of John's letters. Evelyn stood watching, her face turning red. And indeed, a thought flashed through her mind. He does have a lot of mistakes in his letters and there's hardly anything substantial to talk about with him. He writes about trade, about what his brothers and sisters are doing, about the weather. Why do I need all this? Get an envelope, Mrs. Adams ordered, seeing doubts creeping into her daughter's soul. Address it. Evelyn obediently wrote her beloved's address. Put this corrected letter in the envelope. That's it. Seal it. Well done, the woman snatched the envelope from her daughter's hands. I'll send it myself. I won't let you ruin your life. Forget about him, Evelyn. He's not for you. Perhaps your John is a decent guy, but you're stooping down to his level. You didn't enroll in medical school to sell fruit in the market, did you? He's not for you? My dear. Your paths are completely different. They just happened to cross. And I don't think they'll ever cross again. At least I'll do everything in my power to prevent it. 
Mrs. Adams left for the post office to send the ill-fated letter, while Evelyn stared out of the window for a long time. What have I done? She thought. What have I done? John never wrote to Evelyn again. Almost a month had passed since the day her mother sent him the letter. Evelyn didn't write to him either. She felt very ashamed of her actions. Outside, it was cold and damp. Evelyn hated such weather. Today she had dreamt of summer, the sea, and an endless beach. She and John were walking hand in hand, and she held a branch of blooming magnolia in her hands. Evelyn sat in the lecture hall, barely listening to the lecturer. Her dreams were far away. Is Evelyn Adams here? A dark-eyed guy peeked into the lecture hall. Oh, Evelyn, the market vendors are already looking for you, some guy in the front row chuckled. The students in the classroom chuckled after him, and Evelyn blushed deeply. Why did you come? She hissed to John, closing the classroom door behind her. What are you doing here? I came to find out what happened. But now I see for myself, the guy said quietly. My mother was right. A bride from the capital is not for me. Well, I'm sorry, Evelyn. I truly loved you, but conventions are more important to you. This is for you. He handed her a branch of blooming magnolia. Farewell, Evelyn. I won't bother you anymore. The guy turned and walked down the corridor to the exit. The girl stood, staring at the big pink flowers and the first snow outside the window. It all seemed to her like some cheap soap opera. Only the main character in it was her. We'll never see each other again, she paraphrased John's words. Never see each other. John. The girl in a light autumn dress ran down the street, and the first snow fell on her hair and shoulders. John, she shouted. The snow melted, leaving droplets of water on her clothes. Snowflake's teardrops glistened on the pink magnolia flowers. But the guy was nowhere to be found. Evelyn didn't know that John had already left in a taxi. An elderly woman sat by the sea and watched the water. Waves rolled onto the shore, washing away grains of sand and colorful pebbles. A yellow maple leaf fell into the water and twirled like a ship caught in a storm. The wind blew another leaf fell, then another. And the waves kept washing the shore, washing away the sadness and pain from her soul. So I've come, John, she said softly, rising. She wanted, like before, to take off her shoes and walk barefoot on the waves. What will people think? She sighed. But anyway, how long can one think about someone else? It's time to think about myself. Evelyn had lived her whole life with an eye on public opinion and the rules of propriety. Her whole life. Was she happy? Perhaps she was. However, the feeling that she had irretrievably lost something, lost her chance at love and happiness, never left her for a second. Evelyn graduated from university, became a doctor. She was invited to one of the best clinics in the capital. There she worked all her life. There she met her future husband, a practicing surgeon. There was no passionate and fiery love between them, but mutual respect and sympathy, yes. After some time, they had a daughter, a beautiful girl who had long since grown up, graduated from law school, got married, and moved to another region with her husband. Evelyn let her only daughter go. She had her own life, her own destiny. Now they saw each other a couple of times a year. Evelyn missed her daughter, but she didn't insist on her return. Evelyn's husband had passed away long ago from a heart attack. She had already retired and decided to visit the resort town once again, where she had once been so happy. Hello, Evelyn. She heard a familiar voice. It can't be. John. She turned around. You've come at the right time the waterfall is just at its peak. The autumn rains have just ended, said a gray-haired man with a sly smile. Only his eyes were the same black and mischievous. The waterfall indeed was magnificent water crashed against the rocks, cascading from the mountaintop. I see, 
Evelyn whispered. Before her stood the man she once loved. Forgive me, John, she sighed. I was young and foolish. I didn't know how to appreciate what I had. I did love you, though. It's all in the past, Evelyn. It seems to be fate. I'm doing well wife-children business. Everything worked out as it should, I suppose. But sometimes coming here I remember our first meeting. And when the magnolia blooms I can't help but think of you. Forgive me. The woman whispered quietly, tears streaming down her cheeks. The elderly woman walked barefoot through the water. The warm sea tickled her heels. People glanced at her in surprise, but Evelyn didn't care. Now she understood the importance of cherishing every moment of life and every moment of happiness. Dear friends, if you enjoyed this story, write your opinion in the comments and subscribe to my channel. And from the bottom of my heart, I wish you all the best strong, robust health, peaceful skies above your head, and a good mood.